Hello and welcome to the 2017-2018 FCCLA Affiliation Tutorial. We'll be walking you through the process to affiliate your chapter and pointing out some of the new aspects of the affiliation process this year. So to start with, this is the login screen, the homepage of the FCCLA portal. One thing we have added this year is a forgot username button that you'll see right here. You can utilize this if you can't remember your chapter ID number. So if you click on that and you type in your email address, it will send you your chapter ID number. You can also still continue to use the forgot password button as well if you have forgotten your password to log into your chapter. This is our test system that we use to test out different new changes uh, or new aspects of the portal. So it's going to look a little bit different, but it functions exactly the same as what your chapter does. So you'll still be seeing the exact same thing that you will see when you log in. So I'm going to be using a test chapter today to show you how to walk through the portal. So the first thing you're going to do is type in your chapter ID as your username and then your password and click login. And on this confirmation screen this year, you're going to see some changes. The first one is that we're asking you to confirm chapter advisor information. If there is only one chapter advisor listed in the chapter, there is not going to be any confirmation of those chapter advisors here. If there is more than one chapter advisor listed, you will be able to see both of those advisors, and then you'll have the opportunity to make one of them inactive two, three, four, however many inactive in the chapter. This will help you keep those advisors from appearing on invoices and from being an active part of your chapter. So if there's someone who is not there anymore, someone who is retired, if you see duplicate names here, please take this opportunity to just click on the blue check mark button. So I'm going to actually make Mark Jefferson inactive in this case. And then it's just going to ask me to confirm that I do want to change the status of this advisor. So I'm going to say yes, and then this chapter advisor is now inactive and isn't going to show up on any invoices. And then the other confirmation information is the same as before. We're just asking if your principal contact information is still the same. If that has changed, please go ahead and update that for us. Otherwise, it's going to auto-populate. And then you have the graduation preferences. Again, as a reminder, you're going to set the highest grade level for your chapter. So if you are at a middle school and eighth grade is the highest grade level, then you would mark eighth grade. If you are at a high school and 12th grade is the highest, you would mark 12th. If it's seventh grade, ninth grade, 10th grade, whatever it is, the highest grade that your school houses, this is what you will mark. And then you do have options for how to treat those graduating members. So you can move them on to the same chapter. This would be a case where if you're at Washington Middle School and all of your students are going to move to Washington High School, then you would move those on to the same chapter. Eligible for alumni and associates is what you will mark if you are graduating seniors from your chapter. If 12th grade is the highest grade, then you need to select eligible for alumni and associates. And the move on to various chapters option is used if you have students at Washington Middle School, but you're going to send them to Jefferson, Washington, and Madison High Schools. And if that's the case, then you would say various schools and have the ability to say which schools those will be when you graduate students. So I'm going to say eligible for alumni and associates in this case because it is 12th grade is the highest grade level. So once you see all of this information is correct, you're going to click confirm. So the first thing that's going to pop up once you log into your chapter is it's just going to ask you to graduate applicable students from your chapter. This just means any students who were in that highest grade level and have moved on and then just gives you some instructions for how to do that. So once you've read these instructions, you're just going to close out of this screen. One thing you will want to note whenever you are in your chapter throughout the school year, whenever you see something in red, so for example, chapter information, chapter advisors, graduate, that means you need to take action. So for chapter information, we're just asking you to confirm that, that information is updated and correct. We want you to visit the chapter advisors tab and make sure your information is correct. 
but then throughout the affiliation process, you will see red buttons under this members tab if you still have an action to take. So graduate is red, so that means I need to do something. So I'm gonna click on graduate. And it's gonna give me a list of students who were in that highest grade level. So Hunter Campbell and Lacey Thompson were in that case. The email address that we have put is what the advisor has input. So it's a test email. If you know their email address after they're leaving your school, if you have a personal email address, you have the opportunity to enter that information here for us. And that's just so we can keep up with them post-graduation better and have a better list of alumni and associates. And then you'll check that this is the correct information, that these are the people who should be graduated. You can either use the select all button to select these boxes all the way down, or you can individually select the boxes as well. So again, once this looks correct, then you would say graduation completed. If you have a middle school and you're graduating students to a high school situation, and information here does not look correct, you can use this select button to change the destination and say, I wanna send them to this city and this chapter, and you can send them to that location. If you have set a chapter as the school that your students are graduating to, then that's what it's gonna appear right here. Instead of move to alumni, it would say Washington High School. If you're at Washington Middle School, graduating them to Washington High School. So once everything looks correct, you're gonna say graduation completed. It's just gonna ask you to confirm that you are finished graduating your students. If you're not, you could say no to come back to this at a later time. If you are finished, which we are in this case, we're gonna say yes. So this is gonna take us back again to this members tab. And as you can see now, edit chapter members is in red, which means we need to take action here. So we are gonna come into edit chapter members there are instructions up here for you if you need them, but there are some functions here that we can utilize. So this op page gives you the opportunity to review the information of your students and do some quick updates rather than having to edit each of their individual profiles. One of the great opportunities we give you is to say bulk grade roll forward. And if you click on this button and confirm it, it's gonna roll all of these grades forward for you. So you don't have to go down through this list and update those. Another option we have given you this year is to drop students in more of a bulk fashion instead of having to say drop and then confirm um, for students who are not gonna be part of your chapter next year. So now if I want to drop Katie Davis and Olivia Garrett, I can select those two names in this drop column. And then when I scroll down, I can say I want to drop these selected students. So once I do this, it's just gonna ask that I really want these students dropped from the program. And if I do, I'm gonna say confirm. And then those two will not be part of my roster anymore. So once you've reviewed this information, their member title, their email address, cell phone, grade, and their individual affiliation type, all looks correct and updated for the new school year, then you're gonna to come to this corner and click on bulk edit complete. So this screen is just gonna ask if you're finished with bulk editing your students, you cannot come back to this process. So if you're not finished, make sure you say no, but in this case we are. So we're gonna select yes. It also gives you a note to say that you if you have an outstanding invoice from last year, then you won't be able to affiliate in this current year until that invoice has been paid. So just giving you a note about that, make sure you read that. If you have any questions, you can contact us here at the office. So I'm done. I have finished editing my students, so I'm gonna say yes in this case. So now I have my list of students in my chapter that I am ready to affiliate. We have added another new function this year that you will see here in red, and we are gonna encourage you to check for duplicate members before you submit any students to be put on an invoice this year. So how this function works, if you click on check for duplicate members, it's gonna show you a list of the duplicate names in your chapter. Some of them you may want, you may have students with the same name and that's fine, but we just wanna give you the opportunity to remove duplicates before you place them on an invoice and bring to your attention that you may have some. So in this case, Christopher Thomas and Jane Davidson 
our duplicates. I don't want two of those names, so I'm going to select one from Christopher Thomas and one from D Jane Davidson and say that I want those removed from my roster. Just want to reiterate at this point that if you do not take this step at this point and you don't check your roster for duplicates, any students who are submitted and are placed on an invoice are required to be paid for. We don't edit those names, we don't substitute them, and we can't delete an invoice that has duplicate students on it. So please use this function to make sure that you're only submitting names once. So in this case, I am sure that I want to remove one of the Christopher Thomas names and one of the Jane Davidson, so I'm going to say remove and confirm this. So as you can see now on my roster, Jane Davidson is only listed once and Christopher Thomas is only listed once. So now that I've done this red function, the last thing that I have to do is submit my affiliation. So I'm going to click on this submit affiliation button, and then this is going to give me my charges. Now this is an accident we see happen a lot, that people do not select members. So if this happens and you only see advisor charges, you want to close out of this and then go select your students. So you can either use this select all button or you can select individual boxes of students you want to affiliate. In this case, I want to select all of them. So I'm going to select all students and now click Submit Affiliation. And then this is going to show me my affiliation dues for students and for the advisor. So as you can see, you can tell your total charges and then what this quantity is going to be. We know that some of you need this information in a PO format. So if you need that, you can click on this Export PO button, and then you can download this document that's going to give you that information for your PO purposes. If this looks correct and you're ready to submit these students for affiliation, then you would click on Confirm. Again, make sure you read this confirmation here that explains that students cannot be deleted, substituted, or edited once they're placed on an invoice, and that this balance is the balance that you will owe once it's submitted. So I understand that. I have everybody that I need on here, so I'm going to say confirm. And now it's going to give me some options. I can either go look at my invoice right now, I can go straight to pay my invoice right now, or I can just click on pay invoices later. So I'm going to say that I want to view my invoice. So now I can come here, I can view the invoice. Here's the remit payment address for where your payment needs to come. And then here is your invoice that has your dues for your students in your chapter advisor listed, a list of students who are on this invoice and the advisor. And then if you need to download this to print it, you can click on this black download button here in the corner. Once you've looked at this, you can always view this invoice under the Invoice History tab. If you want to look at it to download it for any purposes, you click on this little eye icon, and then it will bring you back to this and allow you to download it. So that's the end of the process. A few other things I do want to note so that you can take a look. The first thing is, again, the chapter information tab. Make sure that you visit here and just make sure that this information, the addresses, the principal information is all correct and is updated. And then you're also going to want to visit this chapter advisors tab and it's going to ask you to update this information. If you have any advisors listed here, who should not be, who are no longer active, who need an updated email address or cell phone number or office phone number, make sure that you take care of that so that you have the correct people put on an invoice and so that we have the email addresses we need to be in contact with advisors. So that is the affiliation process for the 2017-2018 school year. As always, if you have any questions, we are happy to assist you. You can contact us here at the office at 703-476-4900 and ask to speak to anyone on the membership team, or you can also email membership at fcclainc.org. We look forward to a great membership year with you. Thanks.